it's a very exciting time to be a wrestling fan. If you're in the business of making money, it would behoove you to be a safe and inclusive space. Whether you agree with what someone is saying has nothing to do with his right to say it. What's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. So I figure I'm off from work today. I got no better things to do at the moment. I figure, you know what? Let's get this vacation started a little tiny bit early. You know, let me give y'all a little bit of a preview of what's going to happen these next upcoming weeks as far as the content can shit it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But uh, I thought about it, and I'm like, damn, bro. A lot of WWE wrestlers currently wrestle for AEW. And I said to myself, who has the best career so far in AEW since coming over from WWE, whether that's a debut, whether that's starting with the company. And I said, you know what? It's been a minute since I have done a um since I've done an overall uh, tier list video. Let's let's list some of these wrestlers off and uh you know, let's take a tally on it and let's actually grade them for what they really is as to whether or not they've been doing decent in AEW. Has Tony Khan been booking them competently as the best booker and best promoter in professional wrestling? So here are the rules. As you can tell, looking at the alphabets, I'm not going to do your traditional tier list system as far as S tier going all the way down. I did it like a report card. So it's A plus, A, B, C, D, F, no E. Uh, that's in AEW or in WWE. God, I was corny. My point being this, though, going for it. Uh, we're not going to be dealing with any one offs. So if you're wondering why Rob Van Dam isn't on this list, it's because he's a one off. I don't think he's legitimately signed with AEW. I could be wrong about that, but nah, I consider him a, a straight up one-off. I don't really care for that. Uh, I'm not going to put Mercedes Monet on this list because she just came to the company. That'd be completely unfair. I don't see any reason as to why I have to do that. And um, if you're like really, 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 really super duper irrelevant, uh, like you've wrestled a couple of matches on NXT on the dark show or something like that. And you're doing absolutely nothing in, in uh, AEW. Um, yeah, I'm not going to include you on this list also. So I probably missed like maybe two or three people. And that's because, well, I don't give a shit about their NXT dark match career tapings or whatever. But with that being said, let's kick it off with edge. Um, you guys know my feelings on edge. I've been saying it for the longest now. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Um, personally speaking, he just won the belt against Christian. I'll be fair, and I'll say a very, 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 very low C. And honestly, uh, I'm being very gracious. And people may be like, well, Devontae, did you just put out a couple of videos on the Edge failing in AEW? A C for Edge is a failure in AEW. What are you talking about? That that right there in itself is a failure in AEW. If he gets a C, that's a fail. He's Edge. He's a legend. He should be A-plus all day, not a fucking C. That's the equivalent of a regular wrestler getting an F. And, and again, me giving him a C, I'm being very, very courteous. Uh, John Moxley, I mean, what else can I say? They've been treating the dude right. I mean, granted, his run in itself, I wouldn't necessarily say um, he, his booking has been consistent. I don't think that's the case. But as far as being a former world champion a couple times, I mean, I think he's... Is he a triple crown champion yet? Or did, has he won a tag team championship belt yet? I'm not even sure. But, um, yeah, the dude, I mean, Tony loves him. You can clearly tell. I mean, he's always featured. He's always cutting promos. He's always diddling within the mini event scene. If someone happens to fall short looking at you, Phil, um, can't, got nothing else better to say. I mean, the only reason why I would keep it from the A-plus section is because, I mean, again, I don't think his booking has been that consistent. Uh, Leo Rush, I, I guess, a F. F, what the fuck did he do? <laughs> what the fuck did he do? Like, he showed up in AEW, and then he bitched and moaned and complained of growing about racism. Hold him about from my foolish potential. Fuck. Fuck Leo Rush. Uh, Chris Jericho? Um, very conflicted on this. I feel like if this was, like, up until 2021, I'd probably even go closer to A+. Maybe. Because he's a former world champion, and he stayed in the, mix, in the mix all the time. But, man, these last 
like a year or two for Jericho has completely ruined him so badly. Like it, it's like yeah. And again, I'm being gracious right now. I, I'm I'm gonna give him a C. In reality, I should give him a D just for the 2023 run, just absolutely bottoming out his career. Like Jericho is nowhere near close to the performer he used to be, but. I will say as far as prominent spots, he has been in them, not as of late, but he has been in them. So, you know, I guess the longevity with being with AEW kind of median, it helps him out as far as the median is considered. Uh, Rusev or Mido, um, I'll give him a D. Um, I feel like he has some prominent spots. He was a former, um, what was it? What was it called again? Um, international champion. He's a former, no, no, TNT champion, excuse me, he's a former TNT champion. He's had main event spots here and there. I think he looked goofy in some instances being so big and yet dropping the guys like Dar, like, not Darby Allen, but Sammy Guevara, maybe even Darby Allen, I don't even know, and then being left off of television so many times and shit. It's like he had moments that were big that kind of make it out to be a little bit better than what you think it would be, but it's still not to take away from the fact that, yeah, he hasn't been used to the not even close to the fullest extent of his uh, ability. Uh, that's that Martinez lady, right? You can barely see it because it's blurry, but I can see it well enough on my end. That's that Mar- That's that Mercedes Martinez. I don't even know why I put her on the list, honestly. I probably should have left her off with how irrelevant she is. But she was in fucking... Um, uh, what's that name of that group? Um, not Revolution. Um, Retribution. There you go. Yeah, I know she got so far away from that shit and went to NXT, but she was pretty prominent on NXT. Not super prominent, but prominent enough where I feel like it's okay to put her on this. Um, it's a damn shame though, cause um, well, I don't give a shit. That's why it's a shame. Uh, Serena Deeb. People are probably wondering why did I put Serena Deeb on here? She was a part of the Straight Edge Society back in the late twenty or the late two thousands and the early twenty tens, uh, and she's a very prominent fixture on the AEW women's roster. Um, I'll give her a D. I feel like she's been featured decently. Um, if anything, I think giving her a D instead of an F is more so just stemming off of her, um, fantastic, I thought they were fantastic matches between her and Hikaru Shida and then her and Thunder Rosa. I mean, both of those trilogies that she was having with those girls were fucking fantastic. I'm a big Serena Deeb fan. I'm just judging this based off of her run so far. Um, I, I'd give her a D. And honestly, I wish I wouldn't have to. In reality, I would love for Serena D to win the TBS championship. But I know there's a lot of personal things going on in her life currently. So, I mean, them, them's the breaks, I guess, right? Go Dust. Um, just on the strength of the Cody Rhodes stuff alone from uh, the first, uh, what was it, um, Double or Nothing in 2019, he's going to get a D. Not to mention his run also in management, I feel like is serving him. But I do feel outside of the Cody Rose match, it's not really doing Dustin any favors from a legacy standpoint, perception-wise, as far as the audience looking at him on television. I know he's a pretty prominent fixture as far as an authority figure backstage, but I mean, strictly on camera, you know, it tells a different story. Uh, Ruby Riot or Ruby Soho, um... Um, I'll give her, uh, I don't want to give her F or a D. Um, I'll give her a D. She was in the finals in a couple of tournaments, and she was, uh, a part, even though it was a shitty angle, she was a part at one point, um, of the biggest women's angle at the time with the whole AEW frontline versus the WWE rejects. I don't fucking know. Um, I know she's currently right now in this whole storyline with uh what's the guy's name again cool hand luke angelo parker whatever the fuck his name is and that's lame as fuck but again i want to say it's a complete failure close it in on a complete failure but not quite a complete failure um andrade if you would have asked me this like a year ago he would have got an f but i'll give him a d just because of his work so far as far as what he was doing at the moment before he left the company on a uh, collision dude was a complete fixture on that show and uh you know, he had a couple of he had a couple of bangers. I remember the match, the latter match with him and uh, B- Buddy Murphy. You know, him and Miro had a decent angle going on. I like the match between him and Danielson. You know, it wasn't a complete failure. Had it not been for Collision, he would have got an F though. You can bet your ass on that. Uh, Cesaro, um, I'm gonna give him a B. Cesaro gets a B. Uh, his ROH World Heavyweight Championship run um, was pretty solid. I mean, no one gave a shit, but it was solid nonetheless. Uh, again, a guy who consistently stayed on Dynamite, you know, tagging up with his buddies, 
Moxley and Danielson, and I guess Yuta. Uh, as far as the um, Blackpool Combat Club, uh, it's very rare to not see Cesaro on television, whether it's Collision or whether it's um, a Dynamite. The dude is a goddamn workhorse for that company. And um, yeah, I feel like Cesaro has been having a decent run in the EW so far, in my opinion. Uh, Buddy Matthews, Buddy Matthews. Uh, sorry, bro. Got to give you an F, man. Uh, again, he had one solid match that I can remember against uh, Andrade. And maybe he's had some fingers on collisions that I'm not aware of because, I, again, I'm a straight man and I don't watch collision. But, um, you know, I can't really give him anything other than an F. What has he done? He's just been a flunky for a group that sucks at the moment. I, what do you want me to say? I mean, in reality, I wanted to give him a low D because he is a former, what, six-man trios champion along with the House of Black. But what the fuck do those titles mean, right? Uh, Bobby Fish, uh, yeah, the more, the less said, the better, <laughs> uh, John, uh, Morrison, um, another one, yeah, nah, trash, <laughs> trash, Johnny TV, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny, 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 Johnny Test, Johnny Polo, like, get your ass out of here, little boy, all your nicknames, and you can't even get on television, uh, let me see, uh, who the fuck is that, is that Trent, I think that's Trent, Oh, uh, if you guys are wondering, yeah, Trent Beretta. I forgot the tag team's name. Um, what's the guy's name? Caden something? I can't remember the guy's name. Or was it Colin? I can't remember the fucking guy's name. But he used to be in the tag team with this guy back in, like, the um, the uh, late 2000s, early 2010s. And, uh, you know, he used to have the name Trent with a question mark. And it was, like, him and his tag team partner, who's, like, a school teacher right now from the last time I remember hearing about him. And I used to love their team back in the late 2000s. I used to watch, uh, that's when Superstars was still a thing on WGN. Um, and I used to watch them all the time go at it with the Heart Foundation or with the Usos when they came around. Actually, believe it or not, um, I think he was a part of the match where uh, they did that spot for the first time. The whole suplex from the outside, from the inside of the ring to the outside of the ring on the pile. I mean, maybe ROH did it. And I'm just not unaware of it. But, um, you know, uh, Trent, he's been... Nah, with the best friends, I'll give him a D. You know, I I, I can think of worse careers. I think everybody underneath him had a worse career. Uh, Matt Hardy, um, just shit, absolute shit. <laughs> anything Matt Hardy talk, uh, anything Matt Hardy touches turns to shit. It's just horrible. You know, this is a far cry. And I understand age plays a factor. This is not Matt Hardy as in Matt Hardy version one or Matt Hardy Never Die, or even Matt Hardy The Hardy Boys. This is Matt Hardy I Am Broken, literally. Not the gimmick, literally. And man, his anything involving Matt Hardy just brings everything down. And really, you're bringing Jeff down too, and Jeff already sucks at the moment also. Uh, Big Show. I mean, how many matches has he had so far? I remember like two matches, and both of them, like what? One went like a combined... 30 seconds in the other one i'm being hyperbolic maybe it did actually and the second one i mean he fought mostly backstage which i still believe it was pre-taped when he got slammed through that car windshield or truck or whatever bed he was fucking with when he was going against will hobbs but uh yeah big show he didn't i mean his his years are far past him i mean the dude's like how old is all big show he's 20 years older than me because my mom was born the same year as him so i'm i'm 31 so he's got to be like 52 right now probably uh, yeah, his, all his best years are past him. Uh, Stokely Hathaway. Um, I forgot his name in NXT. Um, but uh, he was a decent manager. Only thing is, I mean, I don't really see him doing much right now. The firm was absolutely garbage. Um, I don't know what the fuck is going on with him. And um, fucking, um, what's the girl's name? Willow Nightingale. And I, 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 I don't know what the fuck is going on. So um, I'll give him... As a manager, not nah, F, he's, tra he's trash as a manager. Uh, Christian, uh, you guys already know, bro. Come on now. Christian Cage has been killing it. He has absolutely, the only thing that's keeping him from an A plus is that he was doing it all, he was doing it all in the mid card. Had he actually done it in the main event scene, absolutely would have given him an A plus. But uh, that's the only thing that's keeping him from an A plus for me is, yeah, he did it all in the mid card. But Christian, his I'm your father gimmick or father gimmick has just been absolutely a pleasure to watch. This is arguably, I'd probably say his TNA run is slightly better. 
But um, this is arguably one of his best runs he's ever had. And he's done it all in the mid-card scene. Like I said, the only tragedy with Christian and the father gimmick and all this stuff is the fact that it wasn't surrounding the World Heavyweight Championship. That's about the only thing that's bad about it. And, you know, I still say that Tony should be ashamed of himself because of that. Oh, uh, from Edge and Christian to a Hardy boy. Uh, Jeff. Uh, F. <laughs> I mean, what did he do? Uh I mean, either he's injured or he's in rehab or he comes back and gets fucking killed by other wrestlers. He's losing. He's jobbing left or right. I thought there was supposed to be a prominent story with him turning heel. I just don't know what the fuck Jeff is doing. I, I, I mean, I understand the position, but yeah, nah, Jeff's getting an F for sure. Jeff getting the F. Uh, Joe, come back to me in a couple of months and I might give him an A+. Plus, but for now, I'm going to keep him in an A position. Uh, Joe's been killing it also. You know, his promos have... He's probably the best promo guy, period, in that company. Fuck you and your MJF remarks. Joe has made the best of a bad situation, constantly getting fired and rehired and fired by WWE, the incompetence when in TNA, as far as management is considered. So to see, you know, Joe prominent on television within a different company, and again, making the best of a bad situation. You know, him being... uh, Him having a feud with CM Punk and the whole shit going down at All In... You know, having the thunder taken away from him in his match because of the stuff circulating after Punk did what he did. Him having to constantly look like a fool to certain wrestlers who couldn't even lace his fucking boots. Like Darby Allen, for an example. You know, and I like Darby, but I'm just saying, as far as wrestling ability is considered, don't get a, don't get your pennies in the wad. But him having to overcome all that and to become world champion, again, the only thing that's stopping him from being an A-plus at this point is because his reign for me is very uneventful and it has nothing to do with Joe. Joe is doing the best that he that he can. It's just the booking. The booking of Joe is just fucking horrendous when it comes with the world championship. Not because he's winning every match, but because you're not putting him in a prominent position to let him flourish as your world champion is what I'm trying to make as a point. Uh, Swerve Strickland. Do, 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 do. Our first A+. Plus. Uh, Swerve Strickland is the best in the EW currently at the moment, in my opinion. I don't think anyone fucks with Swerve's game. Um, I think Swerve Strickland on promos has been in, just fantastic. I mean, he may have slip-ups here and there, but overall, I think his promo game has increased and improved tenfold. Um, he's, you know, obviously one of the best Emory performers in the world today. Can't really talk too much about that. Uh, he has trademarks, one of the few superstars who actually has a catchphrase, who can actually engage with the audience, who can actually get them to get hyped up. It, you know, he's just perfect. I think the only thing that's missing from Swerve Strickland is the World Heavyweight Championship. And when he wins that belt, eventually he needs to be the face of the company. If not Warlow, because he's completely trash and he's gone and he's done and he's kaput. I, I said it once and I'll say it again. Y'all want to talk about diversity so much. There's your man right there. Swerve Strickland, face of AEW, right there. Nobody hotter in the industry right now compared to Swerve Strickland outside of the main event of WrestleMania. But I mean rising talent, okay? Again, that's semantics. Fuck. Uh, Wild Bill Hiccup, um, I'll be courteous, I'll give him a D, I'll, I'll be courteous, in reality, I could give him an F, but, like, you know, because of the firm stuff alone, but I thought him and Ricky Starks, um, they serve their purpose, he is a former tag team champion, uh, you know, Wild Bill Hiccup, he's actually a pretty good big man, believe it or not, promos are pretty solid, always been solid on promos, going all the way back to his, um, Enzo Amore days in WWE and in NXT, uh, you know, Colin Cassidy, Wild Bill Hiccup, William Morrissey, however you like to refer to him, uh, he's always been good, you know, good, solid, and ring performer from a big man perspective, um, yeah, just all around decent talent, it's just his booking doesn't, um, it, his booking leaves a heart to be desired, I guess, is probably the best way to say it, uh, Sting, what more can I say, you know, what more can I say, they booked this man better than any legend I've ever seen, but then probably the history of professional wrestling, I can't think of a better legend as far as how he was booked towards the end of his career. Like Sting. Sting, like, he got the send-off only wrestlers could dream of, you know? He got the send-off. The only wrestler who I could think of that had the potential to probably have a better ending than Sting before he ruined it with the Saudi show would have been Shawn Michaels. Had Shawn not wrestled in 2018, I would have said that Shawn was probably the only wrestler that I could think of off the top of my head at the moment. That probably would have had a better conclusion compared to staying going out on top of WrestleMania and having your best buddy send you off. I can't think of a better way to go out. But, um, you know, staying, he he's not going to wrestle again. I mean, if he wrestles again, then that's a different story. But um, 
no, nah, I can't think of a better person as far as a representative for the company, as far as a legend is considered, as far as being on TBS and coming back to a stumping grounds after everything was all said and done, probably canceled from. Again, just Sting was uh, all around pleasure to watch towards the end of his career, and I can't think of a better legend um, as far as um, how they treated that legend for that company towards the tail end of his career. Can't think of a better way to go out than how Sting went out. Uh, Pac, Neville, um... I mean, every time I look around, the dude is, like, not even featured on... I mean, I know, obviously, he has more to do with his visa issues or he's injured. But it's like he's less... He's he's more sitting on the sidelines and he's, like, actually on television. And I like Pog. I like to see more of Pog. He reminds me a little bit intensity-wise and how he carries himself of a Chris Benoit. I like Pog a lot, but, um, you know what more can i i'll give him a d i can't really give him anything higher i want to give him more higher and it has this is one of the few, few instances where it has nothing to do with aew booking as much as it has to do with Pac's personal problems if he can get himself situated and get back on television i would love to see more of him i like the bastard he has a, a certain intensity about him like i said very crisp and wise that i really really appreciate Dude is very no-nonsense when it comes to his promos. He gets in there. He's not your stereotypical flippy-dippy wrestler. He's very, 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 very brawlish for a guy who can flip around the ring. Very rare to see. I mean, he kind of reminds me, honestly, of, like, a more updated version of Dynamite Kid, if you ask me. I fucking love Pac. I just wish he was, you know, around more so I can, you know, really get invested into him. Um, let's see. Tony Storm. Um... Oh, do I want to give her an A plus or an A? Um, yeah, I'll give her an A plus. Only from the standpoint, like I can't think of another. Eh, nah, I'll give her an A. I don't feel comfortable. I'll give her an A. Uh, she's the best female performer currently in AEW right now, even more so than Mercedes. Eat your heart out. Fuck you. No, she's way better than Mercedes. I know people are on the fence about the gimmick. Some may say it's cringy. That's fine. But what you can't take away from is the fact that she is over as fuck with this specific audience right here. And honestly, if a casual were to actually see her, I think they would sink their teeth into uh, Tony Storm just because of her presentation. There's nobody in AEW who has quite the presentation like a Tony Storm. She's a throwback to an actual fucking person, you know, having a legitimate gimmick, not turned up to 10 presentation. No, an actual gimmick, gimmick, gimmick. And I fucking love it. And, you know, her as women's champion has been a pleasure so far. You know, she's been booked better than 95% of the fucking champions in that company. Uh, Tay Mello. Almost considering why the fuck did I put her... Well, I guess she has been somewhat of a... Maybe not recently, but I guess before the pregnancy, she was kind of a fixture on Dynamite with the uh, Jericho Appreciation Society, I guess. I mean, I would like to see more from her and Sammy Guevara. You know, I think that's a duo that would make a bunch of money, you know, if you, you know, knew what you were doing. And because, again, they're so blowhardish about themselves and they're so arrogant and cocky and young. I don't know. I think there's a lot of money to be made out of Tay Mello and Sammy Guevara if you really seek the teeth and end up being hills. But um, no, at the moment, I'll give her out. She sucks. C.M. Punk. Uh, I, I, can I, I, there's nothing else I can do. I have to give him an A plus. I mean, who, who has brought more attention to AEW for better or for worse than CM Punk? Can you guys think of anybody? I don't have to like the guy to admit that. I, the guy has, again, I can't think of anybody else. Dude has legitimately brought so much. I don't think, I think I don't even go out on a limb to say fucking with CM Punk at least him coming back to AEW when he got that 1.1 million on Rampage that will never see the light of day ever again. And then that 1.3 million, you know, before he started to like, you know, decrease as far as his, um, you know, his drawing power is considered as far as how he's favored in front of the audience, you know, that August and September period right there in 2021, before he started to uh, decrease, um, I probably would go on a limb and I'll say that um, I don't think half the AEW, or well, I don't want to say half, that's probably a little bit too much, uh, I'll say at least 10% of the AEW audience probably wouldn't even know AEW even existed if it wasn't for CM Punk, you know, maybe that's a little bit hyperbolic, but you get what I'm saying though, you know, I, I, people get come at me, it's all Devontae, you said CM Punk is not a draw, he's not a draw, I've never said he wasn't a draw, you know, when you have the right machine behind a CM Punk, yeah, the dude can do his thing, you leave him to his own devices and he has to be the one pulling the carriage. 
it'll probably get a pop for the first month or so like it did but then eventually it starts to decrease little by 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 little and you can blame it on the booking all you want to but if cm punk was that much of a draw then it wouldn't matter because to be a draw would mean that your name alone is what actually gets people to want to watch the show they don't care to they don't care about your antics it's your name that's the whole point of a draw but i nevertheless though i'll give him an a plus just because again i can't think of anyone who's ever brought that much attention to aew and probably ever will uh blue pants leva bates i remember her uh speaking of wild bill hiccup uh f next brian danielson <laughs> ah, pissing people off right there uh brian danielson uh fixture on aew television uh has some i mean i can't think of anyone who has had the quality of matches that brian danielson has had i think when looking at brian danielson from a career standpoint one may argue that he took a step down as far as aew is considered considering where he was at previously but uh he seems pretty happy about it i can't think of anybody who has put on more classics in my opinion in aew than a brian danielson i think he's a very consistent wrestler all that being said though all that being said can't quite put brian danielson in the a plus spot because i feel like (laughs) what the fuck was that because i feel like uh, i don't know they just have to keep him from that A-plus spot. Like, you see Swerve, he's incredibly hot at the moment. Staying incredibly hot when he went out. CM Punk speaks for itself. I think what keeps Brian Danielson from being an A-plus for me is just the fact that there was never a really a point in time where, like, I can consider him being super-duper hot for the company outside of his debut. You know what I mean? He's been a fixture. He's always been in a prominent spot, per se. And even then, that wasn't really consistent. Look at his collision stuff. But let us take away from the fact that he is a fantastic wrestler. I love his matches. I will never not stop being a Brian Danielson fan. But objectively, looking at his career in AEW, I think it's probably safe to say that he's an A more than an A+. Uh, Jax Swagger. 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 F. No, get off the B. You're F. Uh, Soraya Page. Um... I feel like giving her a D is like way too symbolic and way too ironic, but I'm going to give her the D. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Soraya sucks. Uh, Paige sucks. She hasn't done anything. I mean, what? I'm putting her right next to her best buddy, Ruby. You know, like the best thing Tony Storm has ever done was break away from these two girls because it's like, I mean, what more can you do with such a shitty stable, right? <laughs> I mean, again, I, I, I know there are Paige fans out there, but... What, what what did she do? I mean, she's she, I'm giving her a D, you know, when in reality, I could be giving her and Ruby Soho an F, but again, they had a prominent stable. Paige is a former women's champion. That's really about it. I got nothing else left to say. Uh, the American Nightmare, one half of the WrestleMania main event, Cody Rhodes. Um, you know what? Truth be told, People are going to probably look at me when I say this and be like, what the hell? Truth be told, honestly, given the things that he did with the company, given the situations that he put himself into, B. B. The dude took himself out of the world title picture. And honestly, outside of the MJF stuff, I can't think I can't think of anything fun, relevant per se that he actually did with the company. I mean, we can have revisionist history now that Brody King is no longer with us, but no one gave a shit about Brody King and Cody Rhodes. (laughs) You can sit there and lie all you want to because, you know, Luke ain't no longer with us, but no, no one gave a shit about that. No one gave a shit about the TNT Championship. No one gave a shit about the opening challenge. No, no. And, you know, Cody being in prominent mid-car feuds, I don't think equates quite enough to him being in the position with the guys who are up there. Not to mention, I can never think of anything you know, fun, not even fun, um, interesting, I guess is the best way to say, outside of the MJF stuff, you know, and that never really came to a uh, conclusion, ask me now, I'll probably give him an A+, plus objectively, because, you know, he's the one half main event of WrestleMania, by default, he's an A+, plus. but AEW run, no bueno, no bueno, uh, Ember Moon, she, she's a tricky situation, because Ember Moon has been fucking annihilating it as a women's champion over there in ROH, but, I mean, when you're not, I'm going to give her a C. I'm going to give her a C. I would like to give her something higher just because of what she's doing. But, I mean, this is all strictly on Tony Khan while I'm giving her a C. It ain't nothing to do with uh, Ember. You know, I 
I, 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 it's beyond me. I mean, you took Samoa Joe up. I have absolutely no fucking clue as to why she's not on, you know, the main roster. I think a lot of people would love to see her versus say like a Tony Storm. I would, I would think people would, I think there's money to be made, honestly, with a program. If you played your car rights with her and Mercedes Monet, if you played your car rights, but for some reason, she's still twiddling her fingers over there in our way. It's just a fucking mystery to me, to be honest with you. Um, Evan Bourne, Matt Seidel, um, get your ass up there, boy. Boom! F, you suck. Um, the chairman, Sean Spears, Ty Dillinger, F, 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 you know what? Nah, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna give him a D. I'll be nice. Just because he was with, um, uh, MJF Stable, you know, he was on television a few times. He did have the first legit complete feud with him and Cody Rose in AEW's history. Um, he hit Cody Rose with the chair and, you know, sparked a lot of controversy within the company when it first started up. Again, yeah, yeah, I feel comfortable. I can give, um, uh, Sean Spears a D. Uh, Keith Lee, F. Where is he? Did I put him in F? I did. Okay, good. I mean, I kind of, I thought for a second there that maybe I could probably give him a D because of the whole tattooing stuff with Swerve Strickland, but uh, that fucking sucked. And I understand Keith Lee has a bunch of health issues that's probably holding him back from, from, you know, his fullest potential, but it still doesn't negate the fact that, yeah, homeboy, you're an F. I mean, the best thing, and again, not a knock per se on Keith Lee, just mean the booking of the characters. The best thing Swerve Strickland has ever done was break himself away from Keith Lee. Such a stark contrast. One is an A plus and the other is an F. Uh Roderick Strong. Um, you know what? Believe it or not, people are gonna probably look at me crazy when I say this. I'll give him a C. I think Roger Strong has been decent. You know, his stable su- I mean decent as far as the booking. His stable sucks. I mean he sucks to be quite frank. But uh, you know, he's been in decent matches. Dude has carried himself really well. You know, he's been in this position where he's been doing a bunch of comedy with adam cole i didn't put adam cole on this did i oh shit i forgot to put adam cole on this list oh fuck okay pretend for a second that adam cole's like on the list if he was i would have given him a b just throwing it out there i mean i forgot to put him on i told you those like one or two guys i was probably gonna forget i forgot to put adam cole here if he was on the tier list he would have gotten a b if it means anything but yeah um roger strong you know, fairly decent guy with the rest of his uh, ne'er do wells, uh, and I forgot Mike Canellas too. He would have gotten a G. Um, yeah, I, I, Roger Strong is fine, I guess. Again, he, we have to see more of him as far as his title reign is considered. But as far as the stuff that he's been doing and booked in positions to lead, I think he's been decent. I wouldn't put him anything higher than a C though. Uh, and Malachi Black gets a D uh, because he started off very strong with Cody Rose, even though the story in this stuff was kind of lame. They didn't really tell much of a story. And then after that, he started the House of Black and just shit the bed. <laughs> I would like to see more from Malachi Black. Also, I'm a big Aleister Black mark. I like Aleister Black a lot, but like, you know, if the shoe fits, right? If the shoe fits indeed. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, man. God. Damn, that just tells you why I feel about AEW. Look at all those D's and F's. God diggity damn. I mean, do I am I wrong here though? Look at the F section for a second. And you tell me who there does not belong there to be called an F. Who doesn't who is like you tell me the F. Is there anybody there who doesn't deserve to be an F? Huh? Huh? Look at the D. Is there is there anybody there who doesn't deserve to be a D? Look at that. Starting from Miro all the way down to um, Alistair Black. No? Let's look at the C's. Disagree? Anybody? Huh? I know somebody disagree with Roger Strong, but eh, I don't know. B's? Decent? The A's? No? The S's? Mona may argue I could have put Swerve in A, to be honest with you, but you know, I feel comfortable putting him in A+, plus, just considering what he's been doing. I, I've never seen the star rise to, you know, the metrics of what Swerve Strickland is currently doing at the moment with AEW, so I feel very, very confident, and I feel very, very okay with giving him that spot. But with that being said, folks, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I will be back later on tonight for the Dynamite review. Unless you're listening to this years down the road, then uh, forget everything that I just said right now. Blindfold yourself and skibbity yourself in Minecraft off a cliff. Deuces, P-I's.